21st Century Entrepreneurship with Martin Piskarik. Did you know that 24% of employees will leave within the first six months if their onboarding experience is poor? But 60% of employees will stay longer than three years if they had an excellent onboarding experience. We're going to dig into how onboarding can be an important strategic tactic for employees to engage their staff and reduce employee turnover, specifically in the skilled trades and construction industry. If you want to have a great onboarding experience, you can download my free onboarding kit and checklist for any industry, whether you're in construction or not. My name is Manya Horner, and I am the founder of Boost LD. We do HR, learning design, and business optimization for construction and skilled trades companies in North America. We tackle some of the biggest complaints from company owners, like how would it feel if I didn't have to babysit my crew? And how can I take all of that deep experience from my senior craftsmen and senior workers and get that to this next generation of apprentices? And how do we make it easier to find the information and processes so I don't have to repeat myself over and over again? These are some of the really important things that we tackle for construction and skilled trades owners with our services. Having been working with construction owners for many, many years, I know that there are a lot of challenges within the construction and skilled trades around the world. It's not just North America, but in North America and Canada and the US, we're experiencing a crisis right now with skilled trades workers. There are so many people retiring over the next five, 10 years that we're experiencing hundreds of thousands of job shortage in the market. And our governments are scrambling to support the um, education sector and to support companies with investing in people, whether that's new Canadians, whether that's young people in the generation looking for employment. Um, we are all collectively working on how can we fix this issue so that we can keep up with the growing demand for building, for people coming to the country, for people who are here in the country. So there's this real challenge with how can we keep up with housing demand and building, crumbling infrastructure, um, historic buildings that need to be preserved and saved and restored. And we are called to be part of that solution. The reason why I have been involved in this sector particularly is because I grew up in a family where we were all in the skilled trades. I worked on job sites. I worked side by side with various industries and skilled trades people and realized that there were a lot of issues with the employee experience. There are a lot of issues with the owner side. And, um, you know, uh, People are great at doing the work, but they're not always that great at figuring out how to make employees happy and to create a really good culture for teams. So my experience is that we can solve this. We can do this and we can help tackle this shortage of skilled trades by being very intentional about how we train people, how we onboard them and how we get them ready with the skill sets they need to tackle these big problems. And it's not just in Canada, it's not just in the US, but it's global.
since we're dealing with this skilled labor shortage, we have to become intentional across the industry about how we recruit and attract great people, about how once we get people into our company working, how we retain them, how we hold them there. And then we also have to figure out how to get people trained and upskilled as fast as possible so that they're productive and they're contributing to the team quickly. So these are three things that we need to figure out. It's not just a one issue here. So one of the key ways is to be very clear about messaging. There's an initiative across North America to start to attract young people back into the trades. For many years in the education system, we were pushing kids into university, into professional services, and into these other industries, and it was looked down upon to be working in the trades. But that messaging over the last few years has started to shift, and I'm so glad to be working with companies and in that industry where we're starting to attract young people back to the trades as a very viable and exciting and lucrative career. So that's one thing we've had to do. The second thing is we have to create interesting opportunities for young people to get exposure to the trades. So there's, um, again, through government support, there's initiatives with non-for-profits, with the different trade schools, even with ourselves and other private companies. It's to show young people what a, skill, uh, what a skilled trades career can look like. And we're doing that through cool things like virtual reality exposure, through experiential, you know, on uh, experiential buses that show up to different events and get kids trying it out and checking it out. It's about educating them on the kind of money they can make in the skilled trades and also the sort of educational opportunities and the career development choices that they have. So we talk a lot about that initial um, onboarding experience. I'm going to come back to that. When you're hiring and recruiting young people, you need to sell this. You need to have great ma marketing material and packages to draw them into an apprenticeship with your company. You need to have a great onboarding experience so that they're wowed so that when they go home after that first day on the job and their significant other, whether that be their mom or their dad or a girlfriend or boyfriend, asks them, how was your first day? They say, it was awesome. Not, I didn't know where I was going and I didn't know what I had to do. And it was really awkward. That's a bad first impression. So there's a couple of components here. You're actively recruiting. You're actively providing a great onboarding experience. And three, you want to be showing them, even when you're recruiting, what the career progression can look like in your company. If they start as a laborer and don't see where they can go, they don't want to work in that job. Young people don't want to be in the same job for 30 years. They want to quickly accelerate and keep up with lifestyle and pace of growth for their financial earnings and their career. So you have to show them that pathway. And that's a key part of what we talk about and what we help other construction companies do is show that kind of career progress and a specific learning path so that they can develop the skills to go from laborer to tradesperson to supervisor, to foreman, and work their way up through that company's career ladder. That is really key for engaging and retaining the great talent that you've put so much money into recruiting. I hear complaints uh, from people in the industry saying, my young people, my employees are leaving because they're getting a dollar an hour extra from some other company. I call BS on that. I call that is not true. You have not cultivated a culture that makes it hard to leave. If people are leaving for an extra dollar an hour, that means you have not created a culture that they love and feel loyal to. If you did, 
they would be able to tell you, hey, can I have an extra dollar an hour? I'm considering going somewhere else. I need more money and you could fix that problem. So don't get caught in this mindset of arrogance as that owner or as that operational director. You owe it to young people to create the right people environment to hold them there and to engage them there and to help them see a lifelong opportunity within your employment. We hear all of these challenges that come specifically from the skilled trades industry. But guess what? This isn't new. This isn't rocket science. And it's being done really well in a lot of different industries. So I have experience as the founder of Boost in many, many different industries. And what I did was I took all that experience with great employee experience and really engaging training and learning paths and awesome compensation. And I took what I've seen and done in other industries and I'm bringing that to the skilled trades industry because no offense, but it's a bit behind the times. It's a little bit of a step up from, you know, fur traders and farming, but not a whole lot. And you know what, folks, like, this is my passion area. I love construction. I have family business in construction. My brothers work in it. I worked in it. I worked in the shop on the tools. I get it, but we can do better. So what we do with Boost through a whole team of really expert people who all have skilled trades experience, we provide professional services in HR, in learning, and in business improvement. And we help with that whole ecosystem. How does the technology support the delivery of all the content and information? How does the strategy create a great game plan for a small construction company, even with 35, 40, 50, 60 employees where, you know, there's a lot of growth opportunity. You've got a lot of energy. Maybe you're a second or third generation owner of a family business. And, you know, dad and granddad did a great job, but you've got some fresh ideas. We love working with companies who want to get better, they want to grow, and they see the opportunity in the market, and they just need a little bit of help to build out that HR and learning and development team. The beauty of working with us and the, the way that we're solving problems is you don't have to hire full-time executive level staff. You can hire us as that fractional team to help you grow. So I love that beauty. We become your partners, but we're not full-time staff. Um, and you have to be careful because we don't do corporate lingo. We don't do HR touchy feely stuff. It's very much, um, dialed in to the kind of people we're dealing with. We know blue collar trades. We know the kind of people we're working with. And that's very important because if you have somebody whose only experience is in high end banking and, you know, high end consulting, no, no. That doesn't work here in this environment. So all the people that are on my team are carefully selected for their experience within skilled trades. I have heard one of the best compliments recently from a client. They told me that they're so happy that we are practical and help with really common sense approaches. And we're working with them on stuff that matters in the day to day. So we're not creating anything that's not really applicable and useful right now. We're all about enabling people as they are today. And a lot of our focus is on leaders, it's on managers, it's on supervisors. There's a lot of work we're doing there because people move into these positions without having the skills. A lot of times people get promoted because they're good at their tool or they're good at their job. 
they're good at being an elevator technician or they're good at being a carpenter. So guess what? Now you get to supervise a team, but they don't know how to do that. So we start there. We always want to make sure that we're helping and enabling those leaders first. We're also aiming to help people become more productive. So when you bring in the right kind of training and the right kind of access to information, think YouTube. You know, if you need to know how to do something, usually you just go straight to YouTube and you look it up. Well, we help create those internal video uh, catalogs and repositories so people can quickly find what they need rather than wasting a lot of time making critical errors or asking people or fumbling. So a lot of what we're doing is directly tied to increasing productivity. And the second thing is reducing error. That's very costly, especially because most of our clients, their field teams are working with materials. And these materials are expensive, lumber, steel, copper wire. You know, you're dealing with tools that are very costly and materials that, that are expensive and the labor costs are high. So what matters to our growing construction company owners is that they can main, maintain profitability on their jobs. And one of the ways to do that is to have your people become better stewards of the materials and the time that they have on the job. So that's really important and training is completely tied with that. Another aspect is reducing health and safety risk. One of the main reasons why people get in touch with us initially is because they have to maintain compliance and regulatory standards. Many of these industries are highly regulated. There's working from heights training. There's workplace health and safety. There's workplace harassment. You know, there's working with dangerous chemicals and rigging and tying off properly and all of these very hazardous environments that their young people and senior people are working in. So nobody wants somebody to be killed on the job. Nobody wants somebody to be hurt dangerously on the job because your insurance goes up. You've got all of the reputational issues. Training is really closely tied with your reputational risk, with the health and safety of your crew, and with maintaining compliance for your industry. So these are all reasons why we're hired to create training and policies and communicate those policies. So it goes beyond employee retention and employee engagement. And then it starts leveling up into increasing productivity, decreasing waste and, you know, excess cost on the job, reducing health and safety risk and maintaining compliance. These are all areas where we're directly influencing and impacting your business results. And you frankly can't afford to ignore this. I would say one of my favorite things about this work is that we get to benefit two different parties with the same work effort. So I care so much about the entrepreneur and the owner because that's me. That was my dad. That's the people who have bought this business or are carrying forward this legacy. It's these people, you know, it might be you who's got this great potential and you want to grow this business so that you leave a legacy. So I get to help you with all of the business results you want and that growth you want to achieve. But also I care so much about the employee and their experience because I was that person. I worked on the jobs. I sanded wood until I had no fingertips left. You know, I stripped paint on historic buildings. I worked on the tools to recreate those beautiful wood pieces that would replicate rotten or destroyed components of the job. I know what it feels like to be a woman in the skilled trades where there is that different element of what it's like to be a woman working with all these men on job sites. I know what that experience feels like. So the solutions we create actually help both 
parties. And I love that so much. That's where the passion is for me. Now, I do want to encourage you to not get overwhelmed by this because it can feel like a big issue. But when there's a great strategy in place and really good foundational elements and the technology is there and we're documenting what's important, we help bring all those pieces together for our clients and we help manage the change. So if you wanna get in touch, please connect on LinkedIn. If you would like to download that onboarding checklist so you can at least start tackling one element of your employee experience, please download that from the link and follow me on LinkedIn to see all of my writings and articles because I am speaking with you there on a regular basis, downloading what's on my heart, what I'm hearing from the industry and how we can all support this crisis so that we can make our lives around us more beautiful, support this infrastructure, build what's been crumbling and create beautiful homes and spaces to live in because that's the work we're doing and the work of the people that we're helping. Twenty first Century Entrepreneurship with Martin Piskarik. Imagine a space where triumphs, trials, and tales of entrepreneurship come alive. Welcome to the 21st Century Entrepreneurship Podcast, a gold awarded journey hosted by Martin Piskorik, connecting with listeners in 95 countries and ranking in the top 0.5% of all podcasts. Join our exclusive community, elevate your perspective, and embark on the path to success.